Hi everyone, welcome to the Sip and Spin. Happy New Year. Thank you so much for joining me on the first show of the new year. On tonight's show, we're going to talk about mead and demystifying drop spindles. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. So in my glass, I have a beautiful honey mead from Camelot Mead, which is a company in the Midwest. Check them out. You can order online and they're available in a lot of different stores. The reason why I chose mead is because it's, it's wine, but it's not wine. It's a fermented beverage made with fruit and honey. And I really like the blend of flavors that you get when you join those two things. The reason why I chose it is it's one of the oldest beverages that was probably consumed by ancient man. And tonight I'm going to talk about drop spindles. And these were the first tools used by ancient people in order to create yarns or thread for the weaving industry or for weaving in general. So picture this, and this is one of the things that I love about spinning, and that's the stories. Imagine you're a farmer. It's 8,000 B.C. You've just had a ton of rain and your entire flax crop is basically rotting in the field and you don't know what you're going to do. And you realize when you get out there and you start cutting down the stalks that inside that hard outer layer are these long fibrous threads. And Maybe another farmer joins you and thinks, gosh, what would happen if we start twisting those threads together? And lo and behold, the idea of spinning is formed. Well, it's certainly not long after that. You can spin just using your hands, but human beings being the inventive people that we are, we needed to come up with a better way to get twist into fiber. And this is where drop spindles were formed. And what I have here with me tonight, I have a uh, stone spindle. These are both, uh, both of my ancient spindles are from the Byzantine era. So this is actually a stone whorl that would have had a piece of wood. And this is quite heavy and this came from Europe and this would have been used for incredibly thick fibers. And then the other one that I have, which is a much more delicate spindle and it's a lot more dainty, this is from the Byzantine era and it is bone. And one of the things that I find most interesting about this is that not only are there designs in it, but early peoples had to figure out how to get holes in stones, basically. And, and ultimately, that's all spinning is. It's a stick and a stone, and you're putting twist into the fiber. Hi, Zola. And Zola's going to be joining us. She goes, no, nope, I don't want to be on camera. So as you can see, it's a bottom whorl, and I do have an example of a bottom whorl. This is a modern spindle. So this is a bottom whorl spindle, and the weight is down at the bottom. And so I'm going, I'm going to start with the bottom whorl, and then I'll move through the other ones. So when you get started with spinning, you need to decide on what kind of fiber you're going to use. And there are a lot of different fiber preparations out there. Braids are probably the easiest to come by. And what this is, this is a blend of fibers and it has been put through a, a drum carter or carded in some way and the fibers are essentially in a long line and you can pull these off and start with this. So you have braids available to you, you have Rolags available to you, and with Rolags you pull them out a little bit, and that's where you kind of do some pre-drafting. And this is going to give you a very light and fluffy because there's, these fibers are going so many different directions. When you spin them, you're going to get a very light, fluffy yarn. And then you also have uh, drafted roving, which is what this is. And all of the fibers are essentially in one long line and they're ready to go. And there's some mohair in here and I'm going to start with this one because they're long fibers. If you're brand new to spinning, look for a fiber that is 
has a little bit longer staple length because it's going to be a lot easier to start out. And when you start spinning, you have to get a leader. And the easiest way to do that is to catch some of the fiber and then to start turning. Now, one of the things that I notice with new spinners is they have a tendency to put a death grip on their fiber. And the problem with that is your fiber is not going to go anywhere because if I'm pulling on this, I, I, I can't draft on it. It's, it's not going anywhere. And if I'm pulling on it and then pulling, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start felting and I'm going to start shredding the fiber. So it's another reason why I am not promoting the consumption of alcohol. I have to say, relaxing with a nice glass of wine does make it a little bit easier to loosen up when you start spinning. So all you're going to do, and this is what those early, early peoples realized is that when you put twist into fiber, you actually make it much stronger than if the fiber is just loose by itself. So I'm going to create a leader by drafting out a little bit and putting in the twist. And I always spin Z first and Z twist is where you're spinning in the direction of the clock. I'm gonna pull out a little bit more fiber Add some more twist to it. Pull out a little bit more. I'm gonna give myself a little bit more. And then, probably one of the, the second most challenging part after starting and getting it going is getting it to stay on and developing the cop on your spindle. So a bottom whirl spindle, the weight is on your bottom, is, is on the bottom, and it's you move the fiber up the shaft, and some have hooks, and that's where you hook your fiber, and that's where you can start spinning. Now, the nice thing with a bottom whorl is because it is weighted on the bottom, you can use the table or another surface to start getting the feel of the idea of drafting. And when you're drafting, you have a zone. So you want to stop the twist from moving, draft out or pull out. And what you pull out, that's going to be the thickness of your yarn. So what you have right here, and if you see it, I've created a drafting triangle. And that's what we call this. And that's kind of like the sweet spot. And because I don't want it to break or fall apart, I'm gonna go ahead and spin on the table for a few minutes. And I'm slowly going to pull fiber out, remembering to break before I pull more out because if I don't put a if I don't hold on to this, the minute I let go, the twist is going to travel all the way up. So I want to stop the twist from traveling before I let go. So that is spinning on a bottom whorl. And I have to say, bottom whorl spindles are probably my least favorite simply because you have you've got all of this energy happening right here. The benefit to a bottom whorl spindle is that your weight is down at the bottom and you can use a table or you can use something in order to start to get that feel of working with the twist and moving your fingers around. Me personally, I like top whirl spindles. And here is an example of a top whirl spindle. And I love these because it's literally 
a stick. It's a fancy stick, but it's still a stick and a stone. And that's essentially what early man was spinning with. So the spindles that just have the stones with a grommet and a stick, these are some of my favorites. I'm gonna start this the same way. I'm gonna grab a little bit on the hook. I'm gonna start spinning in the direction of the clock. And the spinning is creating the energy that will travel up through the single. I think that's enough. Now the nice thing with these is I don't need nearly as much because I am building my cup directly underneath the whirl. And then I'll bring it around and it's on the hook and I'm ready to go. So for the top whirl, I'm going to stop, I'm going to build the twist, pull some out and then let the energy flow through. So again, spin, stop, draft out, let the energy travel up to where my fingers are breaking. And then as you wind on with the top whirl, you want to make sure that you're winding on and building your cup with a larger top than bottom because that's going to keep your weight. Whenever you're working with the drop spindle, however you're choosing to wind on, you want to make sure that it is the thickest where your whirl is, otherwise your balance is going to be off. So again, as I get the twist going, I'm stopping, I'm letting it flow through, and I'm not holding on to this very tight at all. Okay. So those are our two traditionals. In just a second, I'm going to talk about spindles from other countries and some supported spindles. Okay, so you started spinning and now you have this, oh, how do I join fiber that is separate from this? And so what we're going to do is we are going to just get started. And because fiber wants to, because of the tooth in fiber, and that's exactly what it's called, is tooth, fibers want to stick together. So you end up with this seamless join. Now, tonight I've talked about drop spindles that are bottom whirl, where the whirl sits on the bottom and I have talked about Top Whirl. Now, Kromsky, which is one of my favorite companies, I think I own every one of their wheels, and it, it, they're brilliant. And here's something that they designed that's amazing. So this is their drop spindle. And if you're not sure whether or not you want Bottom Whirl or Top Whirl, they've created one that's both. You can't get much better than that. Now. It is a heavier spindle. Here's the good thing with that. Heavier spindles make it a little bit easier to get the drafting rhythm down. It's an even spin, which is really nice. The only tricky part is if you're spinning top whirl, there's actually nothing to it. You just hook on, go, and 
you can spin. The part that is, oh, I need more wine. The part that is a little bit more challenging is if you're going to use it as a bottom whirl. And in order to do that, you need to create a half hitch over this part right here. And in order to do a half hitch, it's really easy. Wrap the yarn around your thumb, come up over the top, and that's your hitch. And that's going to stop the yarn from going anywhere. And there you have your bottom. I do not like half hitches at all. Um, and that's why I don't think they're very stable. But I now have a bottom whirl. So there is an example if you're not sure whether or not you like top whirl or bottom whirl. Kromsky. I'm sure other manufacturers out there do this. I just happen to have this one and so that's the one that I'm going to demonstrate with. So once again, Kromsky, you've got both a bottom whirl or a top whirl. It depends on what you want. So kind of along those same lines, I wanted to talk a little bit about other kinds of drop spindles that are out there and the different things that you can do with them. So probably one of the most popular drop spindles are Turkish spindles. And again, it does, you do need a half hitch on this. This is a smaller Turkish spindle from Snyder Spindles. And if you have the opportunity, please check out Scott's website. It's absolutely amazing in terms of the variety. The cool thing with Turkish spindles, it is a bottom whirl spindle and you have these two cross pieces and ah if you notice this slides and it slides for a reason so with a turkish spindle i've got two cross pieces and the way that i'm going to spin i do need a half hitch and i like the way scott does this because it is thick enough i ran an entire 5k with this spindle and it spun beautifully so again, as it's spinning, I'm breaking, drafting the fiber out, letting the twist carry from one set of fingers up to the next set of fingers. And when I get a good length, I need to wind on. And so in order to do that, I am going to simply go over two posts, under one, over two, under one, over two, under one. And I have to say, as I was running, that was the hardest thing to remember, over two and under one. And then if you're running out of room, you just need to backtrack a little bit do a half hitch and you're ready to go again. And what you end up creating with these, I'm not putting very much twist in here, which is why it's falling apart. I am spinning Merino, which is a very soft fiber. And I am trying to spin it thin to maintain the same weight throughout. It's probably the biggest frustration that I have with drop spindles. As the whirl, as it starts to get heavier and heavier with the buildup of fiber, the drop spindles, it's hard to maintain weight. I will show you a, a fix for that in just a second. So you've done all of this spinning.
and you end up with what looks like a turtle. So, and that's kind of what they're called. So you know that you're doing it right because of the balance underneath. And so you end up with this cute little turtle and you can take out the center and then being careful not to lose your ends. And that's one of the reasons I've got my end there. I have my end here. I don't want to lose that. You can slide out your cross pieces. So there's piece one. There's piece two. And you can see the hole. So when I put it back together, it goes together just like that. So there it is. And when you're done, you have this adorable little ball that I can now take to the wheel and fly. So that's what my finished weight will, or my finished yarn will look like once it's applied. And it's been on there for a while, so. That's kind of the cool thing with Turkish spindles. So with the Turkish spindle, you end up with the little turtle and center pull ball. Uh, the next one that I'm going to talk about, why we're still talking about drop spindles and having to do a half hitch, this is a Scottish drop spindle. If you'll notice, it's just a piece of wood. Uh, this is another one from Snyder Spindles. It is called a, and I'm totally going to mess it up, a Jalagen. And the neat thing with this one, very much like the Turkish Spindle, as I'm winding on the cup, I'm winding it on in much the same way that I would wind onto a nostopine. So basically this part right here is my nostopine and so I am getting a, a solid ball as I spin. And so with this one, just like with any other drop spindle, I do need to do the half hitch. And again, as I get it started, now here's the frustrating thing. Uh, you end up with this fiber and it's sitting over here. And so again, there are a lot of different ways to handle that. One way is with either a wrist or a thumb distaff. And basically, a distaff is nothing more than something to hold your fiber. Traditional distaffs were in a Y shape, and you could put it in your belt, um, you could put it in watch band, and it's going to hold the fiber uh, and keep it out of your way. Uh, a new invention, one that I enjoy greatly is a thumb or a ring distaff. And basically all it is um, for this one, it's just a twig with wire wrapped around it. And the nice thing with this is I can essentially charge the distaff or get fiber, put the fiber on here. It's going to keep it out of my way as I spin. And now, as I spin, And when I wind on, I'm 
going to wind on in crosses. just like I would on a nosedipine. And then I can keep going. That is a jolly end. And in just a second, I will show you the last kind of drop spindle that I have for you tonight, which is a support spindle. And finally, the last one that I want to talk about is a support spindle. And as you can see, when you look at all of the other fiber that I have been spinning, you see that. Um, Jolly again, you are, it's going to be a little bit fluffier. Top whorls, bottom whorls, they all behave a little bit differently. Turkish. Um, a support spindle is really where you can start to spin very, very, very fine thread. Uh, Takli, um, this is a Takli style, which is traditionally used for spinning cotton. This one is a little bit different. It's quite heavy. Um, this is from Galen Designs, and I'm using a singing bowl as my uh, support. You can get a lot of different bowls, uh, a lot of different ways to support the spindle. And this one has a hook, which is nice. I don't have to do a half hitch, it's just a hook. And I'm going to be spinning in the bowl, so I'm not lifting up. I'm, I, and that's because I'm spinning in this bowl, I am going to be able to spin very, very, very fine. Because the whirl is so heavy, I am going to get a lot of spin time. And when you're spinning very fine, you do need slightly more twist. Why, I don't know, I don't remember. And as I'm winding, you see I'm making sure that the cup is wound with the weight down at the bottom. And even on a support spindle, it can still break, which is not a problem. Although it is a little bit more of a challenge to get it restarted. So you don't have as much to work with. But it is the same idea. Again, fiber wants to stick together. This fiber is a little bit more challenging because it is a blend of merino and silk.
the nice thing with this is as I'm spinning, I can hear the bowl singing as well. And when I first got this, I thought there's no way that this is going to be an actual spinning bowl, but it actually is. And so as I've been spinning on it, I'm starting to get some indentations down at the bottom. And the cool thing with this bowl is it does still sing. And the pitch has changed, which is kind of cool. So that's kind of the neat thing with having a spinning bowl that also doubles as a support spindle bowl. So there's like this whole host of drop spindles and fibers that you can get to. And if you're thinking to yourself, oh my gosh, well, what if I, you know, I don't have access to that? I can't, I can't get that. Here's the really cool thing. You can actually make your own drop spindle just by using simple things that you can find at a hobby store. This is one of the first spindles that I bought and it's a beautiful spindle and when I started looking at it a little bit closer I realized this is nothing more than a finial that you could find at any hardware store and a toy wheel. And so I started doing some digging and sure enough there are a variety of sizes of toy wheels out there and so all you need is the toy wheel of your choice and toy wheels do have different openings you can either go for um, the smaller opening with the smaller dowel rod or with the larger opening again the bigger you get the more weight it's going to have and that's something to keep in mind the two that i've created here it is a toy wheel with a dowel rod cut in half. I just cut it in half. I used some wood glue, let it dry, added an eye screw up at the top, and then I painted it. So this one is my octopus design. I painted it, and so this one is a very lightweight. It's under an ounce, so it's going to spin very fine, and it's a top whirl. These are easy to find dowels at any hardware store. They're uh, 12 inches by 3 8 and you just need to make sure that the opening of your toy wheel is going to match the width of your dowel rod. So I could either go this way or I can go this way. And personally I like having the flat on top because then it gives me a design space. A little bit of wood glue and then I could cut that down. And this is very similar to this one. It's a little bit more stylistic. But again, the dowel rod either going this way, this way with a little bit of wood glue, let it sit, and then put the eye screw on top. And you basically have a drop spindle that can be made for under a dollar make a, a series of them, a collection of them. You and your friends can get together and you could have a drop spindle and wine making party and then all learn to spin together. So tonight was a lot of information and there are lots and lots and lots of videos out there on how to get started spinning. If you saw something that you liked, let me know. If there's something more that you would like to see, by all means, either message me or say something in the comments. But ultimately, it's the start of the new year. This is the perfect time to start a new hobby or a new craft. And spinning is a wonderful way to create yarn for your own knitting crochet or weaving project. Lots of studies have come out talking about the benefits of crafting and spinning is definitely relaxing. Probably one of the biggest things to remember too is if you get started and you're feeling frustrated, walk away, uh, journal, 
take some notes. What is it that made you feel frustrated? And then go back and look at that before you go at it again. I'm seeing many, many, many posts from people that want their yarn to be perfect the first time they start spinning. And here's the funny thing. The yarns that you create at the beginning of your journey into spinning, you're going to look back on those and at some point in your journey, you're gonna look back on those early fibers and wish you could do it again. I cannot tell you how many classes I've taken to relearn how to spin with that sense of abandon and thick and thin and over twist and under twist because those beautiful art yarns make great projects. There's a story involved in there. So whatever it is that um, you're doing this year, I wish you well and I look forward to seeing you on our next episode. Again, Happy New Year and keep spinning.